What's up, guys? Mike here, head trader at True Training Group. It is January 23rd. Um, today was a grind. Today was <clears throat> a day where I kept looking for a home run on TWMC, but kept just pulling out singles and doubles. Um, the the lesson that I'm going to cover with you guys is really going to be about understanding volume and the time of day because there was a very there was a specific trade that I made in TWMC today that by analyzing the volume and the time of day I was able to exit that position with a nice profit before the stock pulled itself all the way back in and ended up eventually failing later on I was able to take my profits lock it in and although it wasn't the home run that I was looking for this stock has a very small float guys less than a million share float I thought maybe we had a chance to squeeze today, um, but we still have, you know, about an hour and 40 minutes to go in the day. So maybe this thing will squeeze later in the afternoon. If it does, then I'll be, re I'll be ready to jump on it. But um, understanding volume and, and when volume comes in at different points throughout the day and different times throughout the day, what does it mean? And when you want to see high volume, when you want to see low volume, understanding volume specifically as it relates to the time of day can really help you guys understand when a stock has momentum and when you can expect follow through when you can look to hold on to your position and expect more of a move or it could be a warning sign to you that you know what this stock doesn't really have the juice let me let me kind of cut loose now lock in my profits and 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 you know bail on this trade and maybe you know look if look for something else or revisit the setup later in the day because it's just not going to make that move at that point in time that you're looking for. So that's really the specific lesson that we're going to cover in this video. I used it today on TWMC. It's something that I really teach all of our TGD members is especially understanding volume as it relates to lunchtime. Lunchtime is between 12 and 2 p.m. Eastern, about. Okay, sometimes lunchtime could start at 11.45. It could start at 12.15. It can be over at 1.45, it can be over at 2.30, but typically it's from 12 to 2 p.m. Eastern time um, is typically what you see. It's typically the lunchtime session. So let's get into my trades today on TWMC. I made a couple of them. Um, I'll walk you through all the trades on TWMC and I'll show you guys where, how I was taking profits off and, and how I was pulling singles and doubles out uh, rather than getting that home run. So right off the bat, TWM, TWMC opens up like a bat out of hell. I mean, this thing opened up down here below $5 and shot right to $9.50. Now, this area, this high of the day, this high of the day right here was what, $9.72? $9.72, high of the day. That's a very significant key level for this stock because I'm going to take you guys to the daily chart and I want to show you something. There's that line I just drew at $9.72. As you guys look all the way back, look at that resistance. April, May, June. Look at that resistance at that 975 level. So it's no coincidence that right off the opening bell, that big push went right up to 975 and then started to take a breather and consolidate. I thought during this first pullback and consolidation, I thought we were going to just, just rev up and I thought we were going to go through that level. And I thought we were going to be looking at TWMC up at 11, 12, $13 today was really what I was expecting. On that first push, that first push got me um, really, really, really interested. And on that first pullback, you guys see we pulled into, and I know the VWAP is kind of skewed now because the VWAP indicator moved as trading continued. But at the time of this first red candle pullback, VWAP lined up dead even with the 38.2 Fibonacci level. So on that first pullback, okay, right into there is where I got long TWMC. I'll take you guys to my chair now so you guys can see. At 9.34 a.m., I'm long at 7.85, stop loss in the $7 area. So there I am long, 7.85, okay? And just a few minutes later, we had a quick move right back up to test the high of the day, and I took a piece of profit off the table. I took a piece of profit off the table. Back to my share announcement. See, you guys can see I took some off at 8.75. So 90 cents a share, all right, on that first piece of profit. and just four minutes after my entry was my first take profit, 90 cents a share. And like I said, guys, my first take profit usually is always going to be in front of the high of the day. Then my second take profit will be a break through the high of the day. 
and then I hold on to a piece in case we get follow through and continuation. So I don't care if my profit target is met in eight seconds, eight minutes, three hours. You know, when my profit targets are reached, I act. They, you know, they're profit targets for a reason. So on that first move, I take some profit off the table. Then you can see we start this consolidation action and we start to develop a nice little bull flag pattern. Okay, here is your bull flag pattern. And we're trying to hold support at VWAP. You can see VWAP stepping in here, trying to hold this pattern together. And I'm saying to everybody in chat, I'm like, guys, you know, we need VWAP to hold together long enough for the trade line, which is this yellow line on my screen, long enough for the trade line to catch up and then cross over. But you can see we were not able to hold on to it long enough and we broke down out of the bull flag. We broke below VWAP and I exited the rest of my position right there. Back to my trade now, as you can see, I sold out the remaining piece at 726. All right, so 90 cents a share on 25% of my position. And then I lost 60 cents a share on the rest of the position. So walking away from that trade, very small red. All right, because we didn't get the breakout out of that flag pattern that I was looking for. And I said, listen, I'll still keep this on watch for a potential squeeze move later in the day. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going to make the move now. So let me just, I'll bail on it. I'll, you know, start to focus on some other things. And we'll see if the pattern starts to set back up later in the day. Sure enough, it's set back up later in the day. Let me show you guys, let's draw out the Fibonacci retracement level again. Let me actually make it a little bigger so it's easier on your eyes. Here you can see we ended up pulling back in, but then we found support where? The 50 Fibonacci level. So now we've got some support here at the 50 Fibonacci level on TWMC. We then pop our head above the trade line. Once again, we see, well, not once again, now you see that VWAP is acting as resistance. No surprise, VWAP was support earlier in the morning. Okay, when we broke below VWAP, now it starts to act as resistance. But now, the difference here now is that the trade line is starting to act as support. So once I saw this trade line starting to act as support, I said, maybe now is where we'll get, maybe now is where we'll get that trade line VWAP crossover and squeeze. And I went ahead right in here and I bought a tier one position long at 712. I'll take it back to my chair now. Here you guys can see I'm long a tier one at 712. Okay. Long a tier one at 712. Saying I will add to a full size position and we can get above VWAP. We had a quick little pop and then drop back below VWAP earlier. Uh, I mean, right after my tier one entry, I refrained from adding to the position because the trade line was still too far away. We still weren't above VWAP yet. We got above it for just a second and then pulled right back down beneath it. So I still didn't add to the tier two position until right here. So right there, we popped our head above VWAP. All right. We pulled it in and we held above VWAP. And I added to a full size position right there. Take it back to my announcement. You can see added tier two at 803. So I'm long tier one. Was long 1500 shares at 712, added another 3000 shares at 803, now in a 4500 share position. Okay, so there's the first entry at 712, second entry at 803, and you can see now VWAP starts to act as support, and we get a trade line VWAP crossover. This is where the lesson comes into play with understanding volume and the time of day. I usually do not trade lunchtime breakouts because more often than not, they fail rather than give you follow through and continuation. And the reason for that is because volume is typically lighter during lunchtime. So if you are going to trade a lunchtime move, you have to make sure that it is accompanied with very, very strong volume, preferably the highest volume on the day. So as I'm in this trade, I'm looking at this trade, guys, for a pure short squeeze. I'm looking for all the traders that got short in here in front of this 975 letter. I'm looking for all of them to just get squeezed out of their short positions and take this up to a new high of the day with the small float that this stock had. Okay. That's what I was looking for. So in order to get that short squeeze, you need high volume. The stock will not squeeze without heavy volume. So once we got the trade line view up crossover pattern right here, where the yellow line crosses over my VWAP, this orange line, trade line is the nine exponential moving average. Once that happens, you want to see two things take place. You want to see a quick jump in share price and you want to see an increase in volume. We really never got the increase in volume. And that's what had me cautious. I'm already cautious because of the time of day, because it's lunchtime. Okay. And you can see 
we really never got the volume. Volume just never came. So now we're entering lunchtime. It's 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock. We're entering lunchtime. And I'm saying to myself, this is not enough volume to squeeze. I'm not trusting this. So I said, I'm going to play it safe. Right there, I took 25% of my position off the table. Uh, here we are at 855. So here I took some off at 855. I sold 1,100 shares at 855 and was still holding the bulk of the position. All right, still holding the bulk of the position. And then I'm like, I'm giving it time, I'm giving it time. And then I'm like, man, we still are not getting that volume, guys. I'm like, I don't trust this. I'm getting rid of the bulk of my position because the volume is just not here. And right there, I sold the bulk of my position. Back to my announcements at 8.30, I sold the bulk of my position. So again, guys, I'm long tier one. Okay, 1,500 shares at 712. I added 3,000 shares at 803 for a total position of 4,500 shares. Then I dropped 25% of the position at 855, then dropped half of it at 830. All because the volume just was not there. And this is where it's very important to understand volume as it relates to the time of day. Because if you're going to be going after a lunchtime move, you want to make sure that the stock has very strong volume. This stock did not have very strong volume. As you can see, that was my indication and my clue that we're not going to squeeze right now. Maybe we'll squeeze later in the afternoon. Power hour, you never know. Maybe we'll squeeze later towards the close, but it's not going to squeeze right now. And if that's the case, I'd rather lock in my profits, not deal with the pullback and a potential failure breakdown. Let me lock in my profits because I'm up decent on the trade. You know, in at 7:12, added at 8:03, took some off at 8:55 and 8:30, and I'm like, I'm just gonna, you know, lock this profit in, okay, and get down to a real small tier one size position, and I can always add back to the stock if it makes a move later in the day, and that's what I decided to do there. That's why I exited the positions when I did, and I got down to a tier one, and then once we broke down, okay, below. VWAP right there. I exited the last piece of my position back to my announcements. I sold out the last piece at 762. Okay. So again, not the home run that I was looking for. I was looking for a short squeeze. I was looking for a short squeeze. I did not get it. Okay. But the lesson that I want you to take away from this, guys, honestly, plain and simple, is the importance of understanding volume as it relates to the time of day. I'm still going to keep this TWMC on watch to see if it does anything in the afternoon. But for now, I've got no position. I'm out of it. And we'll look to see, um, you know, if it gives us a, a late day squeeze. But understanding volume as it relates to time of day was a, what allowed me to get out of this trade with a nice profit instead of dealing with this pullback all the way back down to $6. Okay. So that's it, guys. I hope this helps. Make sure to smash that like button, comment below. I respond to all of your comments. Subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate all the love and make sure you hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any more of these videos. I'll see you guys in chat tomorrow and look to finish the week off strong. Take care, guys.